So one of the things I got uh, next week mapped out that's not going to be correct because we haven't had a vocab quiz over this chapter yet. So at some point, I don't know, I don't like having evaluations on Monday. I never have, and I don't like giving them in that manner as well. But it looks to me like we'll wrap this up, and then I think it's fair to say we'll still review on Monday, have a vocab quiz on Tuesday, and then one more day review on Wednesday, and have your exam on Thursday. Does that sound fair? We're here to work with you people. Does that sound fair? This is yes. And some of you are, are replying saying, sure, I, I get that. All right, because as we're uh, coming down towards the end of the first quarter, okay, maybe some of us aren't sitting where we want to be academically. So it's just another opportunity to begin to, uh, to raise your grade. And unfortunately, what happens at the beginning of any school year, it's, it's when uh, your first evaluation um, is, is graded and it's not what you want. You might think you're in such an insurmountable hole or, or a big one, but you eventually can crawl out of that. Sometimes maybe you just have to work a little harder than the next person, okay? Maybe yes, uh, maybe no. And sometimes whether it's what you may have seen uh, running yesterday, you can tell those who really want to be out there and give it all they got, for the most part they do, uh, some of the runners coming through maybe don't seem that winded at all. Maybe they're in that good a shape or maybe it just wasn't important to them. But some of our runners coming through here, I, I think one of our senior gals, she just didn't quite catch the runner in front of her. Um, closed the gap pretty pretty quick, but just didn't quite, quite make it. Or you can tell if you guys aren't prepared, I, I think you would agree if you make uh, a couple of critical mistakes here or there, or if you're not ready for something, not prepared, you can lose, right? And if you lose, it's not that big of a deal because it's the regular season. But And, and I would think that you, you seniors, there's nothing better than going out on top, right? You, you want to put the cap on the season and, and, and finish uh, one in, in the win column. So uh, and, and with that, you're, you're starting to see a lot of the hard work that you've been putting into uh, th this season, and it's starting to pay off. And hopefully it's one of those things to where oh, we got this football team tonight. Oh, the big game is, is next week. That's what we're focusing on. And, and I think your, your coaching staff is saying, Obviously, you would agree, one step at a time. And that's probably what you were told, correct? Just one, one, one game at a time. Just like uh, the, the story I told you about some of our uh, volleyball girls years ago that had made the comment, uh, yep, get your hotel rooms reserved. And didn't even make it out of districts. That, uh, it's very unfortunate that sometimes things like that happen. If you follow baseball at all, like last night, and I was going back and forth between that great football game on Los Angeles to win and then watching uh, Atlanta and is it St. Louis? I think so. My gosh, you're, you're, you're the home team. You're taking a, a three-to-one lead going into the eighth. You're at home and you lose. I, I mean, that's just what can happen in the, the postseason. Those mistakes that are made just amplify themselves. And uh, like I said, it, it's the regular season right now for you people. Just one, one, one step at a time. Okay. While they play tonight in New York. And, uh, so that would be... Then they play in Minnesota for sure on Monday. Hopefully, they can uh, come out and, and, and make.
make some progress because sometimes uh, I don't know if it's, it's true with football but I, I certainly think it was true with volleyball maybe over the years the, the ladies just couldn't get past Chester or maybe in basketball you guys just can't get past well the district may have been Chester Arlington but then the region same region as Bridgewater Emory does that sound right pretty tough to get over over that uh, that uh, opponent but uh, same thing for for Minnesota and, and that's that's the way it should be in the postseason it's supposed to be hard that's what makes uh, this time of year great and uh, We'll see if it's just one, let's say if New York makes an error and Minnesota capitalizes on that, Minnesota shouldn't feel bad about that. You're just capitalizing on their mishap, is that what you want to call it? On what? It, it, it is part of the game. So can uh, officiating. How many of you? We're pulling for Los Angeles last night. And it, you individuals are coached that if you have a play and you see a flag thrown, whether you think you're right or wrong, I'm willing to bet they say you keep your mouth shut. Correct? How many of you know what I'm talking about with a certain linebacker from Los Angeles? Runs into the quarterback as a flag thrown. Do you think it should have been flagged? No. And that's part of the game. Bad calls are going to be part of the game. You have to find a way to get around that. Sometimes in the classroom, you're not a test taker. Or I can't, I'm not comfortable with this. You're going to have to find a way to get around that. Some people are better at that than others. Okay. Back to this. What is unique about this class Hydrozoa that we talked about yesterday. It's something that is very unique and not just the, uh, the, the phylum Cnidaria, but even amongst the entire animal kingdom. There are very few species of animals that do this. Nope, not bell-shaped. Has, do what? Okay, you're getting closer because when we're talking about the class Hydrozoa, they start out in what stage? It starts with a P and ends with a P. They start in a polyp stage. And what's unique about these animals in the polyp stage? It's something that would resemble them to the sponges. Yeah, they're sessile, so they don't move. But is that going to be the way that these animals continue in their life cycle? I mean, they, I think they can stay in a sessile stage, but they go through what process where, okay, we're stationary, now we're free moving. What is that called? Yeah, it's dimorphism, where we talked about that as far as the maggot turns into the fly. It's where you look at it as one stage in a life cycle, you totally change into a different one and become not moving to moving. All right, so what are some characteristics? The main characteristic about shape for this phylum. Now, what did you say earlier? Okay, uh, close, but circular means what? What type of symmetry? Starts with an R. Yeah, radial symmetry. What else is unique with this phylum? They have tentacles. What else? Oh, I thought those were your tentacles. I just caught, saw that out of the corner of my eye. What else besides tentacles? What's unique about them? Not poison. Yeah, they produce venom. Okay, so if venom is inside, what's actually making that? Nidocytes inside nematocysts. Okay, so here's your structure you're talking about earlier. It's when that bell shaped vellum contracts provides that movement. Okay, so moving forward, at the end of this life cycle, it goes from stationary to moving. Now that is totally unique as opposed to these guys, okay? When we look at jellyfish, 
when they're born, now the box jellyfish is a little different, but when they're born, they're already free moving. Finally, there's got to be a reason for all animals in this phylum to have these tentacles produce this venom. There's always going to be protection. Yes, that's true. But the main goal for any animal to have venom is for food gathering. And probably because, especially in this case, what do jellyfish prey upon? which are way more complex than the jellyfish because of having a backbone for one and two, the movement, okay? It'd be pretty tough to uh, try to keep up with that of the fish, so having a type of mechanism to immobilize them then is always going to be an advantage because if there was no advantage to having this venom in these animals, what would that probably do over the course of 300,000 years or so? It would go away. There's no reason to have it. That's right. Oh, cow. We're really on top of things. We're ready for tonight, I think, right? So what might be going through your minds that were not quite ready for this part of the game? It's something that you have absolutely no control over. The weather. Okay. You'll be fine. And that, that's, the, that's the way to approach that. And uh, one of the things that I had mentioned as far as posting our meat, I said, unless it's raining, let's be running. But lo and behold, that was such a high percentage in the forecast, and it looked like it was coming this way, and it did. So therefore, the smart thing to do is postpone it a day. That's what we did. So let's say, for instance, uh, maybe you're doing some, let's say, some, some roofing. You're up on top of the roof. And you had your extension cord, your maybe an impact wrench. To, uh, to drive leg screws into a post. Well, God darn it came unplugged. So maybe you got something with a little bit of hook on there. You might dabble that down and, and you try to give it a yank and pull it up. And then as you're pulling that extension cord up, one hand you got the rope pulling it up. What are you doing with the other hand? Doing well, true. But you're coordinated enough, you can stand like this. So you give it a yank, what do you got to do with this hand? Grab it. Okay? So you got to manipulate that cord from the ground and grab it with this hand. Kind of similar to what we see here, you're manipulating those tentacles to bring it in a little closer. Okay? And since it's already immobilized, what would make sense to me is if those tentacles are already wrapped around that fish, okay? Just kind of push yourself towards it, and then the momentum will bring that closer to its mouth. So it can then initiate digestion in where? It's not where the absorption takes place. It initiates where? In the gastrovascular cavity. That's right. Okay. Then finally, your your last class. Okay. So right away, even if you didn't look any further than this, what's that idea of a polyp telling you? What's true about these animals? 
Yeah, they're sessile and they're not going to move. Okay? So with that, they're born this way, born sessile, and they just have a crown of, of tentacles. So when, when we look at this guy down here, the more colorful, in a certain part of its life cycle with the hydrozoans, they would resemble these anthozoans because they, they don't move. That's why we say they're larger than the hydrozoans, but when, when that hydrozoa goes through dimorphism into a medusa, just like if you're looking at a jellyfish, What's true about looking through that jellyfish? Is it colorful or is it just clear? Yeah, it's pretty clear. So when you look at these animals, they're going to be more colorful because it's going to be more so of a solid type of body structure. Okay, not like an endoskeleton that we would look at, like your rib cage or, or your cranium or something to that effect. But there's going to be a lot more color associated with, with these animals. Now... For the most part, I, I would think that this color, okay, might be for attracting what? What do you suppose their diet is? Fish, again. But with the exception of what fish? For anyone who's seen this Disney movie. The clownfish, that's right. So, again... That is an example of what type of relationship between the fish and the sea anemones. Or sea anemone, I don't know how they say it, sea anemone, anemone. Yeah. So it would be a symbiotic relationship to where the sea anemones protect the fish, and the fish kind of keep the surface clean. All right. So then finally, that's probably the last one. Yep. Okay. So you got these crown of tentacles then. Okay and pointing up as opposed to all the other animals have their tentacles pointing where? Down. That's right. I can guarantee you next week you're going to have to answer this question, okay? This class of cnidarians, the anthozoans, are they similar to the scyphozoans or the hydrozoans, do you think? Hydrozoans, that's right. Why? Why are you right? Because what do sea anemones do as far as movement? Yeah, they don't. There is no movement. Okay? So, if they don't move, how is that different than the jellyfish? Well, they're free swimming. They can move. Okay? So, what is it about the hydrozoans then? Okay? What, how are these similar to the scyphozoans or the jellyfish? They go through what process? They were in this life cycle, now they go through this one. Dimorphism. In other words, they were a stationary polyp where they did not move, kind of like an anthozoan, but now they go through this life cycle, dimorphism, free-swimming animal, now that resembles the jellyfish. And then the hydrozoan, it's kind of like we discussed, is in both cases. It's born sessile and can go into a free-swimming state. So that's how 
The polyp of a hydrozone resembles an anthozone or sea anemone because it does not move. A hydrozone going through the process of dimorphism that did not move then goes through into this free swimming medusa that resembles the scyphozoans or the jellyfish. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time, but that is a big part of this phylum because whether you're talking about hydrozoans, scyphozoans, anthozoans, they all have tentacles, cnidocytes, and nematocysts to produce venom for prey injection. All right, you've got about 15 minutes left. Wrap things up if you so choose, okay? And then uh, we'll grab those papers uh, next next Tuesday. I think that was the due date. I'd have to, because I erased it up there, but I can certainly look at last week's. Uh, okay. Well, this is one of them times to where typically we don't move things up. Usually it's moved back. This case, it's going to be moved up, so they are due on Tuesday. And I think some of you are probably already just on that last question. If you're about done, you can get that wrapped up. Don't have to worry about it anymore. Kind of like, uh, I can shut this off. We'll catch up to you next time.